Hello, hello, and welcome again to African Farming Narratives with Magmac channel. It has been a long while since uh, we made a video like this one. It is a special video today, I can promise you that. Um, we talk about all things that are farming related on this channel but also of special importance to this channel is uh, the growing of castor beans and the production of castor beans and castor oil if you are interested in this kind of farming and you don't know how to i would encourage you to a subscribe to this channel and watch all the videos that are that we've already uh, uh, released regarding castor beans or if you just want to know about castor beans just go back watch all the previous video but do not forget to hit that like button and do not forget to comment in the comment section to tell us what you think you know about uh, the videos that you watch however today is a special day because we have got a guest on the channel today he's from nigeria i don't know much about nigeria myself but i've got a feeling that that is going to change from now this guest is an expert in uh, castor beans production not only in nigeria though they are based in nigeria they work with uh, other african countries as well I think that this guest has got the kind of content, the kind of information that is sought after by castor bean farmers and by those who are aspiring uh, to become castor bean farmers themselves. So uh, Solomon, I just want to welcome you to our channel today. Um, I would like you to now Tell us who you are in your own words and tell us which organization you represent and also tell, about, tell us about what you do and how you work with farmers and what the vision of your organization is. We will also need to know how we can get in touch with you, um, you know, and also... Uh, we will want to find out how we can we can work with you or how other farmers can work with you. I also have a feeling, Solomon, that you are, we are going to see a lot of you on this channel. So over to you, Solomon. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark Mark. My name is Solomon Aga. I'm from Nigeria, like you said. And... Uh, I'm a castor farmer, but most importantly, I work with the African Castor Acres Foundation, ACAF. African Castor Acres Foundation is a non-profit organization that promotes the specific knowledge of castor bean farming and oil production in Nigeria and Africa. Our most important objective is to promote the knowledge of uh, castor bean cultivation because uh, it is vague. It is almost non-existent to most African farmers, especially in Nigeria. So we do offer free sensitization and training for castor bean farmers. I also try to connect them to off-takers uh, for those of them who are able to cultivate. We also make sure that we collaborate with uh, seed manufacturers from India uh, Brazil uh, also try to make sure that, that the communities in which they uh, where they live are also making land for cultivation that's farmland for cultivation available for them so uh, these and some other little ways are the ways we try to help to support castor farming in Nigeria we have alliances with some other castor farmers out of, who live outside Nigeria. And we have tried to offtake most of their products because sometimes the issue of offtake of the castor beans happens to be uh, a little bit challenging. 
I work with, like I said, I work with the African Castaway Cast Foundation, a non-profit which you can also uh, Google up online. Uh, you can see all my contacts there. As you mean, you really want to get in touch with me. Uh, we are open to working with anybody as long as you are an African because the main uh, vision is to see how we can articulate and coordinate the activities of uh, castle farmers in Africa generally. So we are open to collaboration, partnership, uh, uh, in different projects, in def different areas of castle bean cultivation and uh, also castle bean oil processing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Solomon. That is interesting. And I think that is a lot uh, that your organization does with farmers and for farmers in Africa. Um, and I think I picked up from your response there that you work with uh, off-takers who are mainly from India. Uh, that's it. You know, I where I come from in Zimbabwe, and I think it is uh, the 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 organizations that do what you do normally. Well, not normally, but most of them they work with Chinese people. You know, so it's it's India is is um is different. I I also understand that India and China are the two biggest uh, produce world not, not pro I don't know about producing I don't know whether they produce I know in India they produce I don't know much about China but they are the two biggest users and uh, purchasers of castor beans or castor oil so thank you for clarifying uh, that you work with the uh, Indian uh, Indian Indian companies uh, that buy uh, the castor beans and the castor oils from farmers in Africa. So two questions, really, Solomon, if you can respond to those two questions, that will be uh, great. If I am in Zimbabwe, for instance, or if I were in Kenya, or if I were in another country, how do you get the seeds to, to us? I know that from from doing a background search on your on your company, I know that you've got a representative in South Africa, which is great. Uh, I'm presuming that the representative is the in South Africa is the one that that uh, the South African farmers would get in touch with. So if I'm in Zimbabwe or I'm in Kenya or I'm in Zambia, how would you get the seeds to us? And how would you buy them from us? How would you collect them from us after we've harvested? And uh, I think the other question I wanted to ask as well was that if I was a large scale farmer in another African country and I need advice, I need expert advice what would you do do you work with those, do you do you get those farmers to come to nigeria or do you travel to those farmers to give them the expert advice that they need over to you again mark mark yeah i need to clarify that point actually uh, we do have alliances with indians but that's in the areas of uh, procuring uh, our inputs from them. Uh, Indian is known worldwide as the uh, biggest uh, producer of castor seed. They also manufacture the seeds and other inputs in India. While uh, China, like you said, also are the biggest buyers. Uh, with, with China buys uh, Indi Indian castor oil as well and converts them to sebaceic acid, plasticine, and a lot of other things. Uh, right now, we we really need to get across to people in uh, other African countries. Uh, it's, usually, it's not going to be a direct thing. We try to like aggregate, try to locate uh, castor farmers who are resident there and groom them over time, try to reach out to other farmers and uh, bring them together. As the clusters grow, we try to connect them and sense their challenges. As we are growing, we are bound to also profile solutions to some of these challenges. Like we, what is very prominent uh, with most African uh, 
uh, farmers of Castor is that they can't find, they can't get to find a place where they will buy the seeds. And when they do buy it sometimes uh, or online, uh, they have difficulty in locating a an off taker rather, someone who's going to like buy up whatever they have cultivated. Since some of them don't do not even uh, uh, know how to process the oil, as it were. So the main thing we do is that we partner also with uh, a lot of uh, castor oil producers, both here in Nigeria and in other African countries. So besides that, we also partner with. Uh, castor oil producers in places like uh, Japan and uh, also China, like you mentioned. Uh, the Indians wouldn't really need you to uh, sell them castor oil because uh, they are the world's uh, biggest uh, producer of castor oil. So we partner with those other countries that do not pre uh, produce as much as the Indians do. So I think the other question you asked was about how can we collaborate with people outside uh, Nigeria, for instance, or maybe you said when uh, they want to buy seeds. Yeah, like I said, we then try to see how we can establish connections with other castor farmers in most African countries. That was how we also developed our cluster right now in South Africa. We got to one castor farmer. I uh, started relating with them, they uh, came together under one umbrella I started growing from online sensitization, we went up to uh, physical sensitization and training and then supervision of their castor farms and monitoring of most projects that they have over there. That's how we grow. But we can't really come in when there is no, uh, when there's no contact, when there's no body in a particular country or location to receive us. So we do a whole lot of uh, online uh, activity. We try to reach out. Like uh, also there are a lot of resources, you can agree with me, materials you can find online on Castor. This we are put online by certain persons who are also experienced. These are professionals in the field. You can see from the materials that turn out that they are trying to make connection as well. They are trying to reach out. They are trying to create a market. So the need is actually there. So when you go through what uh, the the content that you find online, you try to connect with whoever is trying to promote such information. And who knows? Something will always connect, and that's it. So like uh, you mentioned also, uh, if we uh assuming we someone who's into large scale farming and he wants to uh use our services well that's easy depending on the size of the project uh we can usually we travel if it's not something we can do online we usually travel to supervise and monitor but most times uh before anyone can even go into large scale Castor farming. He must be someone who is experienced, though. So it's usually easier when such a project, or there's such a project, so that uh, if maybe the person needs some expert advice, the person can schedule a visit, or maybe we can agree on terms of uh, services that we render to him. But there are basic services with African castor. Uh, ACAS Foundation, that's my non-profit organization, which you don't pay for. But besides that, there are people who are also professionals, there are also farmers who work under uh, non-profits, as a, they have a kind of a collaboration thing with the non-profit. Because of the kind of services they render, you might need to uh, pay them. But basically, we'll try to see how we can make things easier for upcoming farmers. If we can put ourselves together, I believe that with time, Africa can actually grow a hub of castor, bean farming, and oil processing business. That is, if we can come together. There's a whole lot of activity in that direction now coming up in Africa. With all the challenges, with all the differences in, uh, uh, in, in the location and all that, yet these activities have persisted. We hope that with time, uh, we are going to overcome most of the challenges we are having in this field. Thank you very much, Mark Mark.
and I thank you especially for uh, finding the time to do this uh, interview because as I speak to you, I'm visualizing a whole lot of things, uh, some of the challenges. And I do hope that we may want to do this uh, more often so that sometimes I could also come up with pictures, videos, and uh, practical examples that will help inform people more on what we do. Thank you very much. Oh, Solomon, thank you for that. Thank you for the education on um, the differences between China and India and who produces and who buys. I really didn't know. So, But it makes sense that the Indians are the biggest producers. And I have seen so many videos on YouTube, if you ask, and uh, I've read quite a lot about India and the farms in India. I was actually on the phone the other day with... Uh, uh, a guy who was trying to tell, sell me something on the phone. It, I, was, I think it was about a mobile phone contract or something. And I talked about how, oh, I've got a, I've got a YouTube channel on Custer Beans. And he was like, oh, my God, he was an Indian. This is what all we Indians know, Custer Beans. So, yeah, I suppose um, they won't want to buy so much uh, from us. So thank you for that. And also thank you for the other explanations. And I think that uh, as time goes on, uh, we at African Farming Narratives with Magmac, we will also be willing to work with you. We will be willing to be your contact maybe in Zimbabwe. So all the viewers of this channel, you've heard it here first. We may in the near future um, start uh selling seeds and also of helping you to connect you with the off takers um it is a very very interesting conversation i'm sure we cannot finish talking about everything uh in just this one video so solomon uh i would like to invite you again and again and again to this channel uh, I'm sure we are going to have so many questions and so many probing questions, so many inquiries, I'm sure, will come uh, as a result of this video. And uh, if you are interested in, in custard bean farming and you are interested and in something has been said in this video uh, that, that is of interest to you, please do not hesitate to uh, come in the comment section, ask questions contribute anything you want to contribute and if there is anything we can respond to we will respond and uh, we can involve Solomon again to um, try and answer some of your questions so thank you so much for stopping by thank you for coming back to our channel please do not forget to subscribe and hit that like button and see you in the next one. Stay blessed and remain blessed. Bye.